systems that sex affects that is once you get a disease. We got babies coming here being born with chlamydia in their eyes. We have to give erythromycin to. Now why should a baby have an STD and they haven't done anything? They come in my office and say, there's a bump on my stuff. I can tell you right now, there's herpes without looking. Girls say, I had this discharge of stink. Where you been? Okay, really, I'm telling you, unless it's within the bounds of marriage, if you're having sex, quit. Unless you, and in a marriage, there's no guarantee that you won't get something if that partner is not committed. That's why I say, it takes two and not someone else. What happens is, let's say you're in a marriage. I don't believe in committed relationship. All that means to me, this is my hole for now. That's all it means to me. This is my hole for now. Committed relationship. I would say a committed friendship. Because I know it's possible I dated my husband a whole year and was engaged for a year before we got married. Like I say, it is the dessert of the marriage, it's not the main course, okay? There are so many things to do when you're in your youth other than that. What do you need a boyfriend for? Oh, she's hot, hot where? She probably is running the temperature if she's that hot. Oh, he is so fine. I'm telling you, don't go by looks. I went with one man, looked like a black card gable. He died on top of a woman while his wife was at mass. <laughs> on top of a woman while his wife was dying. And she tried, she died because she didn't give CPR. She too busy trying to get his clothes on. Okay? What a way to go. What a way to go. And then when you see HIV out there, it is bad. It is, you don't hear as much about it because there's new strains coming through that are worse. Yeah. You know, not till the numbers start going up, they'll look at that again, there's new strains that's going out. Because viruses are like this, when they mutate. Bacteria and viruses mutate. And they change the way they look to the body to get around the immune system. Okay, so if, you th if you're having sex, stop if you're not married. If you're married and having sex with someone else, stop. You can live without sex. You only need food and water and sleep. Okay, think about the things that only you can do in your youth. Read a good book. Mimic the figures. I'm telling you, it got more figures in the Bible in trouble than you can ever imagine. Old David was one of them favorites in God's sight. But he was peeping, so don't put yourself in a situation. He was peeping at Bathsheba, Bathe. Solomon, you know, and that's why one of the questions we ask when we do STDs check, were you drinking alcohol? Because you know what alcohol does? It lowers your ability to say no. It lowers your inhibitions. Even if I were having sex, I would stop right now and start over. I am so glad that as a young woman, they taught us abstinence. I go back to there is no such thing as safe sex. And I can always tell when a brother come into my office and I say, did you use a condom? It broke. Oh, you that big and bad. <laughs> You'd have to put it on for it to break. Brothers don't, then they think that's safe sex. It is not safe. Some of those new viruses and bacteria gets through a condom. And HPV, it doesn't protect against it all. Nothing at all. So that is the gist of, you know, it's not to scare you, it's to give you the facts about STDs. What happens is, let's say a young lady has several STDs and they come down to my office and get them two little blue pills or white pills, whichever dose it is for chlamydia. 
Years later down the road, she meets a nice man and she wants to have a child. That baby come out all screwed up and messed up and tore up. She probably had a latent infection of one of these. Or they come here with an eye infection because she's carrying a non-symptomatic chlamydia. And we got to go treat the baby for chlamydia of the eyes. We have to sometimes do C-section because of gonorrhea and chlamydia. And don't get started on herpes. You cannot get rid of herpes. Syphilis goes to the brain. You see some crazy old folks? They probably got a late, I mean, sure enough, crazy. And they walk funny. They probably have a late case of syphilis. Okay? And what I see out there, uh, it's only going up. Did I give you these? Um, these are very, this is very good information. I order these, especially when I do lectures. It's very good information. Um, I've covered. Huh? Yeah. There's the uh, sheets there. There's some that, yeah, those are here. So what I'm saying is you can drop it like it's hot. You can say love ain't got nothing to do with it. You can listen to Ludacris and watch Beyonce bouncing all over the stage. But I would choose self-respect for me. And no, I'm not jealous. I wouldn't have that man she married to if you paid me. You know, no, I'm not jealous that she's making money. I'm all about self-respect. Okay, self-respect. Because you've got some grown old folks out here with STDs and don't know they have it. One of the oldest ladies I just treated for syphilis was 60. 60 years old. One lady didn't have any teeth and she asked me to check her throat. Where you had your mouth? Anytime you use a body opening for other than what it was intended, you will end up like Farrah Fawcett. You notice they cooled that down real quick. There is no way she could have got anal cancer like that without having anal sex. It's, it's, it's such a rare thing that's usually caused by anal sex. You could get trichomonas, gonorrhea, all that in the mouth. That goes from the top of the body to the bottom. You can get it at any end, you know. And the girls that maintain that I have anal sex, that keeps me a virgin. You're not a virgin. Anytime you stick a sexual organ into an opening, you are no longer a virgin. Boys also. Boys also. So it sounds but old fuddy duddy. It sounds like my hormones or old folks' hormones has cooled off. But I have old folks carrying them too. There are some women in this world that believe they cannot make it without a man. Oh, I just got to have, I had one girl come in so many times and had her shirt, her jeans so tight I could have started an IV in her mm. without taking the jeans off. And she would tell me, Miss Gill, I just got to have a man. That's pitiful. If you would channel that energy into reading a good book, learning a skill, following the instructions. You know, old folks used to say, we don't tell you to hear ourselves talking. Really, old, older people want you to avoid some of the pitfalls they went through. I didn't go through it because I obeyed. And then you end up as a young woman, young man with a child that you can't even take care of yourself. Now you got this child who has to suffer the consequences of unbridled sex. If it is an immutable law, you cannot change it. Anytime you go against an immutable law, you end up with negative consequences. And I'm here to tell you, make it a choice to be celibate until marriage. And once you're in the marriage, be monogamous, okay? It works for you, it does. And I'm a living testimony of that. Any questions? Yeah. That's funny you mentioned all that stuff. I dropped out of school, man, and I don't even think about stuff like that. In my friend, I, but I, the Holy Ghost gives me, you know, the understanding to understand for such things. And the other day, my friends are asking me, you got a girlfriend, you know what I'm saying, and everything. And he said, you taking the women to church, I'm taking them to the bed. He was saying so much nasty stuff to me, man. And people are just don't understand, man. I don't understand why it's so evil, man. That's what I was speaking.